G'day guys, uh, Hamish Hartlett here. We're live on uh, on Facebook, obviously, uh, up at the Gold Coast in preparation for a game this evening. Um, obviously, been a very, very interesting week for everyone, uh, us included. Um, obviously, uh, going to miss your, your support, all your power fans here um, this evening, but we know that you're going to be barracking pretty hard for us at home, so hopefully we can uh, put on a good, a good show for you. This front camera's not doing me many favours, is it? Have a look at this. This is just about in the next suburb. The nose is looking a bit crooked anyway. Um, all right, so we've got Sarah here. Uh, she's just asked whether we're going to sing the song and do any dance moves. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's an interesting one. We sort of saw the, the Collingwood boys last night after their win. Um, sort of standing a couple of metres apart from each other, singing the song and making a bit of a joke about it. So I actually didn't mind that. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll sort of make that decision after the game, uh, provided we, we get the, the right uh, result. How big is my forehead from Scotty Lysett? Um, uh, it's a pretty stock standard size. The hairline hasn't crept back too far at this point in time. I am bordering 30, so I'm sure in the uh, not too... Not too distant future, the um, the hairline will start to recede a little bit, but I'm in better shape than a few of the other boys at our footy club, so no issues there. Another one, my forehead looks massive. I, I assume he's referring to my forehead uh, there, but uh, the shave lid, um, yeah, look, I, I just get very very frustrated with the the hair i've got a lot of hair follicles but they're very fine and my hair is very straight so it does frustrate me from time to time and as soon as as soon as it starts getting too annoying i, I just get rid of it so um that's where we're at there uh pineapple on pizza yes or no it's uh it's a no generally from me but i do like my pizza sort of uh, either supreme or with a lot so um, I'm not too disappointed either way. Uh, going to see, Aaron has asked uh, whether we're going to see me in around the middle or primarily off half back. Uh, no, I think, I think probably my, my days in the midfield are, are behind me, so very, very comfortable at half back. We've got a, we've got a great bunch of uh, fellas back there, and I um, really enjoy playing with those guys, and uh, I think it sort of it suits my aerobic cap capacity and physical capacity too so uh, very happy at half back there Aaron uh, we've got a question here from Rachel about is it time for the Hoff to bring back the iconic chainsaw celebration I think that's a great question Rachel and um, yeah in terms of the the atmosphere and the motivation that we're gonna have to generate from within the playing group um, at the stadium uh, we're certainly going to have to think of ways to be able to do that because clearly um, you guys as our supporters aren't aren't going to be there to um, to make noise for us. So uh, we'll have to think of ways that, that we can sort of motivate ourselves and maybe it is time for Wester to bring back that uh, that famous celebration. We haven't seen it for a little while, so <clears throat> if we can get on the, uh, the scoreboard for us, we might see that one come out. We will never tear us apart to play next week at the Adelaide Oval. Um, I reckon it probably will at this point in time. I think all our normal sort of pre-game stuff is remaining the same. Clearly, we, we won't have, uh, you know, the 40,000, 50,000 people there screaming it out um, alongside us. But I think the, the anthem will still get played uh, prior to the game. Uh, what celebration am I going to do if, if I score tonight? Um, no, I haven't really, I haven't really thought too much about celebrations. I haven't kicked many goals recently. Uh, I managed to, to sneak a couple through in the in the Marsh Cup series, so that was nice. But um, I don't, yeah, I don't really think too much into my my goal celebrations. They sort of just come about naturally. But I don't have uh, I don't have many to choose from. Um, Anthony has just asked, how's the preparation been this week? Yes, yeah, so obviously it's been very different um, for everyone this week. Our contact hours at the football club have been uh, limited. Uh, the amount of time that we're spending together uh, as an entire playing group is is vastly different to 
what it would normally be. So pretty much the only time that the entire playing group is together um, is for the main training session. For the rest of the day, we sort of we're all separated, so we do our gym sessions uh, in four separate groups now instead of you know, two or three. Um, so the amount of people and the amount of time that we're all spending together has certainly been scaled back pretty significantly. Um, you know, and the health and safety of everyone at the football club, staff, uh, players, admin staff, uh, volunteers, are all paramount, and so therefore. Um, you know, these these things have to be uh, have to be put in place. So, very different week, but um, no doubt that come come game time tonight, uh, the boys will be right on. Uh, Danny Marshall was just asking if I can give him a wave. So, yeah, mate. My mum says I look gorgeous. Thanks, mum. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sure you look gorgeous too. Uh, I'm just waiting. We've got lots of uh, lots of questions and comments here, so um, I'll try and get through as many as I can. Um, how's Ebo going? I was getting worried about last year. Yeah, so Ebo obviously he's um, had a few whacks around the the head, and um, you know got a couple of real nasty ones last year, which put him back a few weeks. But uh, he's obviously wearing a, a lid these days and taking every precaution he needs to in that space um you know super super competitive trainer uh, runs as hard as anyone else in our team and still got that real competitive edge about him Ebo. so i don't think that um playing with a helmet is um having much of an impact on the way he's going about things uh, we love him as a teammate and um you know again he gets his chance tonight to to uh you know, put in a, a good, solid performance as he's always done across his entire career. Uh, just get to the bottom of the list here. Uh, Grant Grant reckons I'll kick a couple of uh, snags tonight, so that'd be nice, mate. Um, how much from Tim? How much would a woodchuck? How much wood would a woodchuck wood if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Yep, not bad, not bad. Uh, what would George Yardies bring to the forward dynamic? Yeah, so Mitch, uh, you would have seen little bits and pieces of Mitch throughout the Marsh Community Series, and obviously we've had um, you know the opportunity to to play and train with him throughout the preseason for the last three or four months. Um, he's uh, super exciting. I think you know with Charlie sort of missing the second half of the game last week, he gave Mitch. Um, probably a little bit more responsibility in terms of flying for his marks and creating a good contest for us. And he, he got his hands on a few of them, didn't quite grab all of them, but um, certainly provided a great contest for us in the air. I know he's, he's super dynamic um, on the ground. He's got great agility. He's got great speed and he runs really well too. So he's, he's, it feels as though he's been playing with us for, for a number of years already. That's, that's the way he's just fit into our forward dynamic. Uh, and again, provides a great presence for us aerially and, and both on the ground as well. I know a couple of our more experienced defenders who have spent a lot of time on him throughout the preseason have found him really, really difficult to play on. And, um, and he's caused a few headaches down there. So hopefully he can, he can cause a few more tonight. Uh, how's Jack's walk? Jack Watts coming along. Uh, yeah, Watts is going really well. So he's he's made a pretty well a full recovery from his his uh, leg injury that he sustained last year. Um, you know, with with these significant injuries, it, it's not just a case of uh, you know coming back after a certain time and and getting back to your absolute best right from the get go. It does take a little bit of time to to ease into things, to find your feet again, to find your best form again. So, you know, Watsy has has put together a, a decent workload over the last sort of month or two. And uh, unfortunately, with other competitions being sort of cancelled across the, the nation, Watsy won't be able to get the opportunity to play his trade um, unless it is at AFL level. But yeah, you know, physically he's he's really in a good place. Um, he had a little bit of a setback with his calf just recently, but um, he was running around the oval, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, really freely. And I imagine he'll be joining in um, to our main group within the next uh, two or three days. 
I'll just keep scrolling through. Uh, lots of support um, for the team. Obviously, lots of people are going to be tuning in tonight and thanking us uh, for getting out there and wishing us well. Um, another one from Anthony here. Uh, who's one... T- <laughs> Who's the one teammate you wouldn't want to be in quarantine with? Uh, there's probably a few to choose from. Um, I reckon Zach Butters. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw his his videos the other day at uh, Team Photo Day. And Butsy can be a bit of a pest. Um, doesn't keep his mouth shut for too long. Uh, he's always got something to say. So I reckon Butsy would be my pick. He's um he's a bit he's a bit picky with what he eats as well. He's very basic. He's um, type of operator that just sort of eats his ham and cheese sandwiches and doesn't really stray stray too far from that as well. So he's very very picky and, and decisive with what he wants to eat. Uh, is Club Aquarius in Mildura my favourite gym? Geez, it's right up there. Um, cracking facility down there in Mildura, but um, yeah, there's a couple that are, that are probably just snuck ahead of it. Uh, Got my hands on any more retro gear? Any chance of debuting it in the Walmart? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. I've got a, um, I've got a jacket or two at home that I haven't been able to uh, to wear out in public just yet. But um, there's been some good stuff come in and uh, it's hiding away in the wardrobe at the moment. I don't think our sponsors would be wrapped if we were sort of rolling around in a 97, 98 sort of um, bomber jacket. But uh, I'll try and bring it out at some point in time. Uh, any new tats in the off season? Yeah, I've got a, filled in a couple of gaps under the arms, but um, yeah, unlikely that that many people will see them. Uh, sorry, guys, plenty of comments here, which I really appreciate. So thanks, uh, thanks for everyone for sending them in. I'll try and try and uh, get to as many as possible. Um, Jamie's just asked here, how is Connor Rosie and Miles Bergman? Yep, so those those two fellas, obviously. Uh, yeah, Connor's in his second year at the football club and has has made um, some significant improvement again throughout the off season, uh, off season and pre season, along with uh, Butsy and and Zave. Um, so those guys are tracking really well. Connor is likely to spend a little bit more time in the midfield, which is exciting for everyone. Um, certainly adds uh, a bit of speed and, and dash in there and and a bit of class too. So um, expect him to have have another really solid year. Uh, Miles uh, is tracking really well too. So it was obviously our first draft pick um, from the most recent draft and uh, picked up as a as a high forward or a, more of a, a forward line player and certainly showed some really promising signs. Athletically, um, is just a freak. So he's got great speed, uh, runs all day up and down the ground and uh, has got a nice vertical leap on him too. Really highly skilled player. Uh, will take a little bit of time to develop um, and just, you know, fit into the the rigors, I suppose, of AFL footy. He he did hurt his ankle throughout the preseason and missed probably three or four weeks worth of training there. So, um, again, Miles has developed really nicely, um, and unfortunately, with a lot of a lot of the guys um, that aren't in the AFL squad at the moment, um, just going to have to sort of bide their time and keep knocking the door down um, to get their opportunity. Uh, looking forward to big uh, watching Big Charlie this year. How has he been training? Yeah, look, Charlie um, has, I think, had his best pre-season, certainly with us, um, and his best, best pre-season for probably four or five years. Um, no injuries whatsoever. And so apart from sort of the one that he sustained in, in the last uh, Marsh Community Cup series, but just a, a very minor sort of groin groin niggle there, but um, hopefully we'll be okay for next weekend. But um, Charlie's you know presence around the playing group is is certainly can't be understated. And when he's in a, a good headspace and physically when he's he's up and about, um, you know he's, he's a brilliant teammate. He's a super guy. Charlie um, obviously went through some difficult times last year, um, but uh, he's he's pushed on. He's He's in a really good headspace at the moment and uh, we, we're looking forward to the big fella having a great year for us. Uh, how confident 
am I about uh, the season and where Port's at? Yeah, look, I've, and I've said a couple of times in some some media stuff that I've done uh, recently that I feel like um, throughout this pre-season, we have made the most significant inroads in terms of our development as a whole playing group and, and our game plan um, that I've seen for you know two or three years, particularly in the front half and what we're doing in that space. Um, you know, I, f- I thought that last year we had a lot of our game you know, in a really sound place and we, we were quite um, competitive across the board in a lot of areas, but we sort of let ourselves down probably in the front half of the ground. So um, I feel like we've really improved in that area, but you never really know sort of how you're going until you play against a, a proper opposition. So we get that opportunity to, to display that tonight. Uh, what else here? Um, yeah, a couple of questions that I probably yeah, probably can't answer, but some some funny ones in there. Uh, anyone stiff to miss the twenty two this week? Um, oh look, the guys the guys that have come over as travelling emergencies. Uh, so you know, Jared Lena has had a, a cracking preseason and has certainly. Um, you know, more than capable of, of being in our starting lineup. Kane Farrell's another one that's the same, and Peter Laddams um, decided to uh, to pull his finger out of training over the last week or two and really put his put his uh, name up in lights. So um, probably those three are, are the ones that are right around the mark, as, along with probably Sam Mays is the other one as well. So um, got some good depth, you know, in our in our squad at the moment. So that's that's exciting as well. Uh, where did I catch that massive fish in the off season? Yeah, I've got a I've got a good mate of mine whose parents live um, in Coffin Bay over on the Air Peninsula, and uh, we went out looking for some nanagai that morning and managed to to come across a few tuna. So that was a pretty exciting morning um, out on the water. Uh, any chance paid members can catch up and smash some red tins with you since we can't go to any games? Um, I'll run that one. Hey, yeah, fellas. How are you, boys? You well? You gonna ask me a question? Oh. Um, I'll run that one past Kenny. Uh, Benjamin, if we can uh, have any red tins after the uh, game, we'll catch up with a few of our members, but I don't like your chances, unfortunately. Thoughts on Dan Houston winning the Brownlow? Um, look, obviously, Houston's made the, the move into the midfield at the you know the back half of last year, and we know it's a it's a midfield medal, so he's um he certainly put his hand up to to be in the running for that one. So Husto, um, he's made a, a great transition into that part of the ground, and again throughout this this off season and pre season, he's he's really developed as a midfielder. So really integral part of our of our playing group now. Uh, just keep scrolling. Uh, say hello to Caitlin for me from Danny Marshall. G'day, Caitlin. There's that one. Julian Farkas has joined the uh, the conversation. G'day, Jules. Jules is uh, the the coach of our um, South Australian under sixteen uh, you know, state team, and he's a good man, Jules. He does some great stuff with with the young fellas that are that are up and coming in South Australian football. So g'day to Jules. A uh, couple of questions about whether I'll be kicking any any long goals tonight. We'll sort of have to wait and see. As I, as I mentioned, I've been able to sneak a couple through of recent times. So um, hopefully you can get another, on the end of another one tonight. Uh, how important will Robbie Gray be this year? Yeah, look, he, he's an absolute superstar of the competition and, and um, has been for a long period of time now. I think the great thing with Robbie is that... Um, you know, not only is he always looking to improve his own game, but he's really taken a, a, a keen interest on um, the young guys that we've got down in the forward line and helping them develop and become as good a players as they can uh, as soon as possible, particularly um, Zach Butters, who uh, who Robbie will, will probably claim. He was the, the mastermind behind drafting Zach last year. So, you know, Robbie is a, is a nightmare and a headache for any defender um, whether he's you know, 32 years of age or 24 years of age, um, 
So he'll be a handful this year and, and just that experience and that presence that he's got in our forward line will be really, really important for us. Peter Laddams, hey champ, we don't need an essay for every answer, righto? Thanks, thanks Pisty. Keep that in mind, mate. <laughs> How difficult um, or easy is it to you to stay focused on tonight's game with all that's going on off field? Um, yeah, obviously things have, have been a bit different this week and we knew that was going to be the case, but um, you know, as soon as the as the playing group step step foot on the the training track this year, uh, this this week, I should say, uh, we train you know flat out with great intensity um, and a great mindset as we always do, and I assume that that'll be exactly the case tonight when we step foot on that playing field. A couple of boys just trying to wind me up in the background here. Carl Amon and Riley Bonnet. Get out of here. What? Oh, he's put a comment on there. Carl. Uh, Riley Bonner. Will you change your shoes or put them in the bin? I think it, I think the boys are referring to these ones here. They're my new slides that um, that I purchase just frequently. They're, they're my answer to Birkenstocks. I've refused to buy Birkenstocks for a long, long time. Every, every other man and his dog's got them. And I didn't want to be that guy. So I've got these ones and I'm, I've copped a fair bit of flack for them. But anyway, we'll be right. Um, have I got plenty of toilet paper from Matthew Smith? I think I'm down to my last three or four rolls at home. Um, my, I, I bought some extra tissues recently, so that will hopefully get me through for a little while. And my girlfriend, my girlfriend's mother, <clears throat> um, bought what she thought was was toilet paper as well, but actually was uh, hand towel. So if worst comes to worst, we might have to resort to that. But that's uh, that's a bit of a stretch. I'll be jumping in the shower, I reckon, before I do that. Uh, can we please get the, the boys to sing Never Tear Us Apart before the game? Uh, I'll probably sing it because I, I generally do before the games, but I'm not sure how many of the other boys will, will sort of get involved in that one. Uh, do I think the members will, will be able to get to come and watch at some stage? Look, um, hopefully next week would be nice uh, for the obviously for the showdown and uh, we'll be wearing the prison bars so it's going to be a huge game for us but um, I'm not liking the chances of, of the supporters getting there at any time in the near future uh, but you know this thing is developing from day to day um, who knows whether we'll even be playing next week that's um, unfortunately that decision's out of our hands but um, we'll just keep adapting to the different circumstances that keep presenting to us. Um, all right, let's scroll down to the bottom here, see what else we've got. Is Bokey still annoyed at me running him out in the T20 showdown? Uh, yeah, he let me know about it for a little while. Um, I, f I figured he'd already spent a fair bit of time out there, Bokey. Um, so it was... It was yeah, you know, he was due to give someone else a bit of a crack out in the middle. Um, thankfully, it didn't cost us the win because I reckon he was he was looking likely to to bring up triple figures, bulky the way he was hitting them. But um, no, nah, he was he was alright about it by the end of the night. It was a great night though. That T twenty that was, uh, um, yeah, it was one of the most enjoyable events and. Um, uh, experiences I've had at Adelaide Oval, honestly, this, it was uh, phenomenal. So thanks to everyone that, that came out and supported that that cause. Maybe we might be able to we might be able to do something to raise um, some money for the corona coronavirus victims next season. The boys are throwing some meadow Lee butter at me now. We got Peter Laddams, Scott Lysett. Darcy Ben Jones, yep, usual crew. <laughs> Ryan Burton. <laughs> All right. Uh, best young talent you've ever seen? Um, yeah, probably 
Uh, Connor, yeah, Connor Rosie, just the impact he had as a first year player last year was phenomenal. Um, you don't you don't usually expect your first year players to come in and play more than probably half the season, I don't reckon. But um, for him to be able to play, I reckon he played every game last year, finished you know, fifth in the BNF, um, I think was our leading goal kicker as well. So his, his, uh, his talent is certainly unquestionable and he's got the work rate to go with it too. So that's really exciting. Uh, does anyone collect their own footy cards? Uh, I think there'd be a few players that, that collect their own individual ones uh, and that have over the last you know, few seasons. I know Tommy Cleary has got a big collection and he gets a lot of the boys to sign um, to sign each card that, that he f comes across. So Claus is probably the one. There is a guy, I reckon his name's Matt. He comes over from, from Melbourne and he always brings me uh, my footy cards from from that season, so I've got I've got a nice little collection building up at home. Uh, what else? Biggest pest in the side? Yeah, Butsy Butsy's certainly up there. Um, Tommy Rockliffe is another one that that springs to mind. Bit of experience behind Rock, but. And him and him and Butsy have got a bit of a sort of a war going on between each other and playing little jokes on each other all the time. So they're probably the two. Uh, uh, yeah, another one about uh, playing in defence or, or pushing up the ground. Yeah, I think I'm locked away in the in the back line for probably the rest of my career, however long that may be. Um, you know, if, if things are going really, really badly in the midfield, I might sneak in there for a minute or two, but I, I don't think that that'll be the case. So, uh, uh, what else? Song, the song I listened to just before uh, going out. Yeah, I've, I've got a bit of a, a wide variety of, of music that I listen to. Um, there's not any one song that really springs to mind and it really gets me up and about. I've just got a sort of a, a general playlist that I, I play uh, pretty frequently, whether that's before game or in the car on the way to training or um, just at home. I just listen to whatever music I'm, um, I'm feeling at the time and, uh, and go about preparing sort of my mental state in other, other ways. So. Um, after this, what does the, the game day prep look like uh, for me? Um, what's the time? So it's one thirty over here at the moment. Um, uh, probably got three or four hours to kill before we sort of leave and get to the ground. Um, some boys will go to sleep for, for an hour or two. Um, for me, I'll just go up and, and hang out with a few of the other boys, maybe go out for a little walk, but not do anything too physically taxing. Um, I don't generally, generally like sleeping. Um, the afternoon of a game, it, it sort of makes me feel a bit more fatigued um, when I when I wake up. So uh, I'll I'll probably a few of the boys have bought their playstations along, so I'll probably have a few games of FIFA um, and just sort of kick back and relax uh, for for two or three hours, and then get the mind in the right uh, in the right space and get to the ground from there. I think we've got just over a minute to go, guys. So. Uh, we've got a couple more here. Um, have I still got the heritage cap you s oh, that I swapped? Yeah, with so this is Karen Stevenson or Chris McKay. Um, yeah, so basically the, the story goes that um, a long, long time ago I, I uh, swapped a training shirt for a, a old school Port Adelaide cap um, that I saw in the back of a back of a car I, I pulled a guy over um, bailed him up at Bunnings warehouse and we we did uh, a little swap in exchange of attire I suppose and uh, I've still got that hat I don't get to to wear it too frequently but it's it's sitting safely um, in the comfort of my house all right and last one guys uh, thanks to everyone who's had a look, uh, certainly been an interesting sort of half an hour. Um, pretty much went the way I, I expected it to be with a few of the boys being 
a bit of a pain in the ass, but um, that was always always to be expected. Uh, last one. What's my favourite colour? Um, yeah, probably green. I don't know I've always liked the colour green. I don't know why, but uh, even from a young kid, um, that was always my favourite colour. So not a really exciting one to finish off with. But um, anyway, I just want to. I've got a quick quick message here. I uh, just want to say thanks for the question. Um, we can definitely feel your support from everyone at home. Obviously, we'd love, as I mentioned earlier, for everyone to be there tonight. Um, that can't be the case at the moment, but um, we know uh, that we'll try and get on top of this thing uh, as soon as possible and get everyone to the ground and and watching games of footy um, sooner rather than later would be great. Uh, get around the club on social media, hashtag never tear us apart and uh, show everyone how you're supporting us uh, from the living room, from the pub, wherever that might be. Um, show us on social media how, how you are supporting us. Uh, we are all in this together um, and we, can't, we uh, can't wait for the game tonight and to showcase what we've been uh, working on over the, the pre-season. So thanks again, guys. Uh, again, cheers for your support. We'll see you soon.